It's time for us to learn some redstone. Mojang sell an official Minecraft guide to redstone, and inside of it are explanations as to how redstone components work. They have a few redstone circuits in there, and then they have a few full redstone contraptions that you can build. And I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the product. It's a really high quality item. All of the instructions are incredibly easy to follow. Everything seems to sort of make sense. But I think it's safe to say that the redstone contraptions that are included in the book are a little bit weird from a redstone perspective, and there is a reason for this. I think it's because they've been designed to teach the person who's building the redstone contraptions how redstone works. So they use slightly strange circuits and slightly strange methods to achieve things, but they do this so that the player actually learns how to build these circuits and how to do these things. But the upside of this is there's plenty of room for me to improve things. So the first redstone build that we're going to be looking at today is the so-called secret piston passage. And here it is, hit this button, this little piston door opens up and we can make our way into a tiny little secret passage. Redstone wise, it is ridiculously simple, so I don't think we're going to improve the simplicity here. The only slight gripe is it's not really that secret. I mean, there's a, there's a button on the wall. So let's get rid of that thing and maybe swap it out for a redstone torch key that we can then, if we place a piston down here, that will extend something across. And then, I mean, maybe something like that could even work. You know, we could have something like this. And then when we place in a redstone torch, it opens and remove. I mean, all we need is something to break that redstone torch. I'm getting somewhere with this idea, so if I place in the redstone torch, you can see the redstone torch gets broken and then the block moves out the way, so we can we can do something like that. The only issue is, is that our door has now stopped working properly. That is kind of a big issue. I mean, this maybe isn't, this maybe isn't the simplest design. I can understand why they didn't have this in the redstone book because it doesn't look like it makes any sense whatsoever. Imagine you've just learnt what redstone dust does and then the first redstone contraption in the book looks like this. I mean, essentially what's happening here is, is this observer is detecting the door opening up and then it's sending a redstone signal through to this piston down at the bottom here, which causes it to retract its block. So it does all function well. I mean, it all works well and it fits nearly within the footprint of the original design, but it's definitely weird. Weird? But improved? Definitely improved. Right, let's look at something else that's weird. I'll be honest, I can't remember the last time that I saw a redstone clock that looks like this. I mean, they were occasionally used way back in the day, like a very, very long time ago. But as I say, it's been... It's been many, many years since I've seen one of these things. This is referred to as the piston clock, and it's very big, and it's very loud. And I feel like we can do something that creates the same effect without the bigness and the loudness. And yeah, I mean, as I expected, this... this does the trick. Just a bunch of observers in a little circle running an update through one another. I mean, all problems basically in Minecraft are fixed using observers. As you can see here, the timings are exactly the same. Everything stays in sync, but it's, it's a lot smaller and it doesn't deafen you. With that being said, this redstone circuit teaches you a lot about Minecraft redstone. It teaches you how blocks can be powered to then power redstone lines. It teaches you about one tick pulses. It teaches you about smart pistons. It teaches you about redirecting redstone signals. There's a lot going on here. I'd say there is a lot more value in understanding how this redstone contraption behind me works than just building this one without really understanding what it's doing. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, Mojang, please don't hate me. Now, one thing that neither of these designs can do particularly easily is toggle off. So I went away and created an even smaller design that actually has an off switch and it's even weirder than that one. You know, this one involves droppers being powered and then observers detecting the powering of the droppers and then these hoppers right here are to make sure that all of the droppers are silent because otherwise it would make this really, really annoying noise. Going from 108 blocks in volume down to 36 blocks in volume whilst becoming toggleable and silent. It's a very strange design, but I love it. There's also this smaller silent design, but when you toggle it off, then it powers one of the redstone outputs and I don't really like that. I've spent far too long looking at this weird redstone clock. Next up, we have got the mob farm trap. Now the idea the idea of this thing is you have this little area of shade right here. Any mobs that are outside in the daylight will start burning up and they will hopefully make their way to the shade. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, hopefully they will make their way to the shade eventually and then they will fall through the trapdoors and be hit by those fire charges that are constantly being shot out by those dispensers right there. I mean, it's four fire charges every single shoot and... I mean, we haven't... 
That wasn't the best example of this thing working. Once again, I don't think Mojang are actually recommending that you build this thing in survival. I think they're just showing you how redstone clocks can interact with hoppers and dispensers and all sorts of different redstone components. At least I sincerely hope that that is the case. What I find arguably most strange about this redstone circuit is that to get the items into the chests from this hopper, hopper platform up here, it actually tells you to run the items down into droppers, which then shoot the items across into hoppers that are facing downwards. Even though these hoppers are directly underneath the hopper platform, so they can very easily just take the items down into the chests. And of course, the constant firing of fire charges, which is incredibly expensive, is also a little bit bizarre. I can think of far better ways to kill mobs, but it's all for the good of education. Oh yeah, you also can't turn this thing off without breaking it. It's all for the good of education. It is really difficult to access the chests that are in the middle here. Education. But what would it look like if I was writing this redstone book? Well, unfortunately, it probably wouldn't actually involve that much redstone at all, which I guess is a bit of an issue for a redstone book, but I would probably, instead of relying on shade, rely on mob pathfinding trying to get towards me, and then rely on wither roses to kill off the mobs instead of using fire charges, and then underneath those wither roses I'm going to have a bunch of minecart hoppers which will pick up the items and move all of them into this chest right here. Let's see how well this goes then. So instead of me in the middle, I've used a villager, and we're just going to use some zombies here, as give a pretty healthy number of them, and... I mean, I would call that a success. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's gone well. That has gone well. They are getting absolutely destroyed by the Wither Roses there, and eventually when they die, all of the items are now on the floor, and they are all being picked up by a minecart hopper, and they're making their way into the chest. Fantastic. Okay, let's get a little bit more risky now. This, this could go south very, very fast, but if I stand where this villager is and put myself into survival mode... Nothing is exploding just yet. All of them are dying. And all of their gunpowder is going to be picked up. I think it's safe to call this a bit of a success. Now, before all of you start shouting at me down in the comment section saying this design is far more expensive because it uses wither roses, number one, you could use magma blocks, and number two, you have to remember this design used about eight fire charges per second. Moving swiftly on, we have got the armor stand swapper, and this thing is actually really, really cool. So you can see when we flick the lever, all of our armor stands get switched out, and we've got three of them in the chamber, which is pretty nice, and the way that it functions is, is sweet. It's a really nice, simple little design. The only thing that has me a tiny bit miffed is why they went for a lever. I mean, all of this redstone is great, but then the lever, you actually have to flick twice to make it work, which is, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit bizarre, especially when you could just go over here and swap it out for a button. And sure, there's a little bit of delay when you hit the button for when it activates, but you only have to press it once, which I would say is a little bit easier. I really can't see why they choose to use a lever in this situation, but I digress. As I say, the redstone circuit itself is actually really quite cool, so it's going to be difficult to improve upon this thing. I just want it known that I am categorically not expecting this design to work, but I'm just curious about it. No, it's, yeah, it's broken. Yeah, it's very broken. Oh, but there is a glimmer of hope. There is a glimmer of hope, and I'm gonna have to do something weird to make this thing function, but promise me, I think we could be onto a winner here. Right, let's have a look. There's have a look and that looked like it functioned didn't it let's get these guys kitted out in the finest clobber here goes now we should be able to see what's happening and it actually works this weird little redstone circuit does actually function this is a tiny little llama stand swapper it is smaller in every single way and also it functions faster than this design over here. I would consider that to be an absolutely enormous win. Do I think it belongs in the official guide to redstone? No. I feel like if you read this and saw this, it would just confuse you further and you'd never want to touch redstone again. But I guess as a bit of a counterpoint, you know this. This circuit right here, which is a little bit confusing to redstone beginners, is also in the guide to redstone. So maybe... Maybe they are open to confusing weird stuff. Maybe Minecraft Redstone just in general is confusing and weird and we just have to embrace that. That might actually be the truest thing I've ever said in my life. Now for our final Redstone circuit in Mojang's official guide to Minecraft Redstone, we have got what's called the Piston Squisher. We walk inside of here and we are now trapped. Now, I think initially this was meant to suffocate you. I think this was designed before we were able to crawl, but now it's still... It's still a really annoying thing that you can't actually get out of without breaking blocks. I really like the idea, but it is quite big and bulky, and I definitely think we could make some changes to this thing to make it function a bit better. One thing I will say is, the way they pop up the bottom pistons is actually really smart. I mean, I can't, I can't really improve upon this. So the pressure plates are what's actually powering the pistons. This redstone line right here isn't actually powering anything. 
It's not doing anything, it's just giving updates to the pistons so that they extend when we walk over the pressure plates. I'm a tiny bit embarrassed to admit that I potentially wouldn't have thought of doing it like that. Like, I might have ended up doing something a little bit bigger and bulkier. I think the key difference between my design and this one over here is the top section. This top section just seems absolutely enormous and it seems to have a huge number of repeaters for what is actually going on here. Once again, I think this is to teach the person who's building the redstone contraption what delay is and potentially how to power pistons from above. Maybe teach them that you can power them in this way. I'm not entirely sure. It's certainly teaching them something. Anyway, this design is now finished, so if we pop inside, everything should work as expected. So we have been crushed downwards. I can't escape this place. And quite frankly, it's, it's actually a little bit frustrating. <laughs> it is a tiny bit annoying because this looks like I should be able to get through and then the block pops up. It doesn't kill me like it's probably meant to, but it's still, it's an annoyance. So there we go, that is me building up Mojang Approved Redstone and then improving upon the Mojang Approved Redstone. This has actually been a ton of fun. I genuinely really like the idea of the Redstone book. I understand what it's trying to do. I just, you know, when I see a Redstone contraption that can be improved, I just can't help myself. I'll put a link to where you can purchase it down in the description and there are more Redstone contraptions in there. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please let me know down in the comment section. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. Now one very funny thing about this Redstone video is that when I actually purchased this book, it arrived from Amazon and I opened it up in front of my girlfriend. She thought that I had bought it so I could learn more about Redstone as if I was doing research. <laughs> like I'd bought a Redstone textbook on the internet that would allow me to make better Redstone videos. Oh, bless her.